It's called Colobopsis explodens, and it belongs to a group scientists casually referred to as the yellow goo ants. But don't let the funny nickname fool you. These ants are deadly. But what's even crazier is why they explode and how their sacrifice rewrites the rules of nature. Let's talk about the insane biological mechanism behind this explosive act. It's called autothysis. Think of it like the insect version of a suicide vest. But it evolved naturally. When threatened, minor workers of Colobopsis explodens flex their abdominal muscles so violently their gaster ruptures. It literally bursts open, spraying a toxic, sticky, bright yellow secretion that immobilizes and sometimes kills the attacker. The goo smells like curry, no joke, but it's deadly. And here's the wildest part. This explosion always kills the ant. Why would evolution create a creature whose defense mechanism guarantees its own death? Because these ants aren't fighting for themselves. They're fighting for the colony. The colonies of Colobopsis explodens aren't small. Some stretch across 2,500 square meters and can house thousands of individuals. They live in the forest canopy, up to 60 meters above the ground, building their homes in trees of the Dipterocarpitae family. These nests are spread across multiple trees and linked by trails. It's not just a nest, it's an empire. And like any empire, it needs soldiers. But not just any soldiers. These ants have a caste system, and only one caste is equipped to die. Meet the minor workers, small, sterile females who perform basic tasks like foraging, cleaning, and defending the nest. But in the face of danger, they don't retreat. They go nuclear. Scientists found that these minor workers display a unique pose when threatened. They lift their gasters high, ready to explode at the slightest provocation. Once detonation begins, there's no turning back. The ant dies, but the colony lives on. Here's a fun science twist. Termites also use autothysis, but ants and termites aren't even close relatives. That means this extreme behavior evolved twice, independently. This is what scientists call convergent evolution. When two unrelated species evolve the same solution to the same problem, in other words, the world is so brutal, exploding yourself is sometimes the best option. But the explosion isn't just for killing predators. It does something else, something surprising. Turns out the toxic goo doesn't just fend off enemies. It also contains antimicrobial agents. Think about that. These ants aren't just sacrificing themselves to stop predators. They might be disinfecting their entire nest the secretion has low insecticidal but strong antimicrobial activity, which could help prevent the spread of bacteria and fungi inside the densely packed colony. It's as if these ants evolved a built-in biological Clorox bomb. Here's the part that leaves scientists scratching their heads. If exploding to protect your colony is so effective, why don't more species do it? The answer? Because autothysis is a dangerous evolutionary gamble. First, it's expensive. Evolution favors efficiency. And self-destruction isn't exactly efficient. Each exploding ant costs the colony energy, time, and resources to replace. It's a one-use defense with a high replacement cost. Second, it requires a highly structured society. Only species with extreme levels of eusocial behavior, where the colony behaves like a single organism, can afford to lose individuals like chess pawns. For ants like Colobopsis explodens, the value of the individual has been reduced to near zero. But most insects? They're still built for survival, not sacrifice. And maybe that's why we find it so haunting. Because it forces us to ask, when does a life stop being a life and become a function? In that sense, exploding ants are more than just a quirky forest oddity. They're a glimpse into what nature is willing to trade for survival. Minor workers patrol the leaves, bark, and branches of their host trees. Sometimes they clean, sometimes they graze on moss, algae, or even yeast. They feed on whatever the forest provides. Epiphytes, tiny dead insects, even bits of fruit. 
but they're always watching, especially at nest entrances, where guards inspect every returning ant. If a forager comes back with prey, she must present her gaster, like a passport. If the guards don't recognize the scent, she doesn't get in. This isn't just a nest, it's a fortress with a biological ID system. And even inside the nest, vigilance never stops. Returning ants are stopped, inspected, sometimes turned away. Scientists believe if a forager's scent is off, maybe tainted by prey or foreign microbes, guards may treat them as a threat. Because in a colony, this dense contamination spreads fast. And for a superorganism built on trust, even one compromised ant is too many. These ants are primarily active during the day, especially when it's warm and sunny. Rain slows them down, unless they have shelter. Then they continue working, even at night. On the day of a nuptial flight, when winged males and queens take off to mate and start new colonies, minor workers become scarce at the entrance. It's as if they know this day is critical. Some even carry larvae out of the nest in the early afternoon. Why? Scientists aren't entirely sure. It could be ventilation, it could be preparation. Whatever it is, it's another layer of sophistication in an already shocking social system. Inside the nests, scientists also found something unexpected. Symbiotic crickets living alongside the ants. And in the guts of Colobopsis explodens, special bacteria from the Blochmania genus found only in carpenter ants. These microbes help with digestion and may even play a role in the ants' explosive secretions. So now we're looking at not just ants, but a superorganism of multiple species, all working together in an ecosystem more complex than we imagined. So why does this species choose death so easily? Because in their world, the individual doesn't matter, only the colony does. This is the brutal beauty of eusocial insects. They operate as a hive mind. Each worker is just one cell in a larger body. If a cell dies to save the whole, that's not a tragedy, it's duty. We like to think self-sacrifice is a human virtue, but here it's pure instinct programmed into their biology. No glory, no medals, no last words, just one job, hold the line. And maybe somewhere in that alien logic, there's something deeply familiar. So the next time you see an ant on the sidewalk, remember, somewhere in the trees of Southeast Asia, its cousins are preparing for war. And if it comes down to it, they'll go out in a blaze of yellow, gooey glory. If you enjoyed this mind-blowing look into exploding ants, subscribe for more stories where nature breaks all the rules. Hit like if you never thought an ant could be a hero.